I was told about a great book called Ava by Kara Masso. Ava Klein, which is the person that she wrote about, was only 39 when she was dying in the hospital. Who was Ava Klein, I thought, and why would someone devote an entire book that looked like it was single sentences? And that's what I wondered. Ava Klein was 39, a lover of life, a world traveler, professor of comparative literature. So who wouldn't find someone like that interesting, right? Eva's theme is the poignancy of mortality, the extraordinary desire to live, the inevitability of death, the things never done, never understood, the things never said, or said right, or said enough, your yearns with her struggling to hold on to all that slips away. Now, when I hear the word extraordinary, I wonder, do I desire that in my art? Could I have that in my art? Is my art just ordinary? To me, there's paintings I do when I'm done. I think, wow, that's extraordinary, but is it just ordinary to somebody else? Well, abstract art is kind of that way. There's people who have bought a piece of my art that find that they connect with it. And they've said the word extraordinary because they connected with that piece of art. I've had other people walk in to the residency where I was and look at a piece of art and walk back out. They weren't looking for abstract art. They didn't understand it. They certainly didn't understand mine. You know, I look at the artists that I admire the most. Some of them, well, most of them, really, they're nothing like me. But then again, they're artists, they're painters. So they're a lot like me. So what makes a beautiful piece of art? What makes a painting unique? And this is a question I've asked myself from the day I started painting as an abstract painter. How do I create the art that speaks to other people? And I realized something really important. I don't really need to have that as a goal. M my goal is to paint art that speaks to me and to paint with the yearning inside me. While looking at beauty on, on the outside world and looking at other people's art from the masters like Joan Mitchell, they inspire me. But I've learned that the art that I create is from a deepness from within my soul. My paintings are normally layer after layer, so it's hard to paint one painting at a time. I usually have two or three going. But the theme throughout is a mixture of what's going on currently in my world not necessarily what's going on in the world while that does have some influence but what's going on inside me and then how i portray that onto the canvas and it is not from any visual in my head it's from a feeling inside that actually took me a while to understand that and to comprehend that that's how I paint my paintings. I used to try to describe when people would say to me, what were you thinking when you painted that or what's behind that painting? And sometimes I can't answer that because the thoughts behind that particular painting were personal and unique to when I painted it. Many times, if you were to peel off the paint and get down to the bottom of the canvas, you will find words that I have painted. And I started doing this a while back. I don't always do it on every painting, but I'll paint the words that I'm feeling. Now, if I could remember those words each time to tell the person that 
bought my painting, this is what I was thinking when I was painting it, then I could be able to answer their question, but many times I can't. I, I don't remember what it is that inspired a particular stroke or textures that I put on my paintings. I do know that I am very intuitive to things around me and other people. And while I'm not around a lot of people, one, because I'm an introvert and I'm painting in my studio alone, but due to COVID, I still feel the people around me and the people that I love and my friends. I feel when I'm talking to them on a conversation. So that influences me, but it's mainly what's inside, deep inside me, that comes out on the canvas that is so unique to those particular moments and sessions with me and the canvas and the paint and the brushes and the tools that it is a kind of like a love affair with my canvas and my paints. It's hard to explain it any other, any other way but to explain it like that. So as I paint a painting, I may not always talk through my paintings when I show other people because I don't know really what to say. It's more of an emotion from within that comes out. I hope that makes sense. As I paint, many times there's these quotations that come to my mind from, from people that have said some wonderful things that I'm sure you've heard them, like Ralph Waldo Emerson. He said, every artist was first an amateur. And Henry Matisse, creativity takes courage. And Picasso, every child is an artist. And Ansel Adams, you don't take a photograph, you make it. Thomas Merton, art enables us to find ourselves and lose ourselves at the same time. These are so beautiful and yet they are so true in our lives and they have such an impact on our art and I find they have an impact on my soul when I paint and sometimes I find myself thinking about the words and what they mean. And then I find that when I do a stroke on my canvas, that it's a direct correlation to something that is said by somebody. One of the artists I wanted to, to share with you today was Mary Lee Abbott. She was an American artist known as a member of the New York School of Abstract Expressionists in the late 40s and 50s. She was born in 1921 and died at 98 in 2019. She was known for her colorful canvases and sweeping brush strokes. They were influenced by her time spent in St. Croix and Haiti and she loved like landscaped type colors but she did abstracts 
she lived off off and on through through the 1950s in in uh, Haiti you know she wasn't very well known for years but what I related to was um, one of her uh, quotations from uh, a video she put out and she was talking about abstract painting she says it just hit me I just liked it trying to do things representationally didn't work for me and like with abstraction she says I could talk in a different way and that's what I love about her paintings because that's what I relate to and that's really how I feel it's like she took all the words that I feel and and had set them said them years before and she was uh, greatly influenced by another um, a male artist that I just absolutely love, William de Kooning. So um, I'm going to paint something to um, kind of just is influenced by her, although painting comes from my soul and from within me. Her painting is a style that um, I so much can relate to. All right, I have finished this painting, at least to the point where uh, it's finished for me. It's a 24 by 36. I had no idea when I went into it from a blank canvas um, where I was going to go. I added a lot of the things that I love to add to my canvases. There's a lot of texture. There's a lot of uh, mixed media, a lot of medium in here, and it took several directions and um, I love the vibrancy of the colors and um, there are some added papers some handmade papers so I'll show you um, I think what I'll do is another video that will go slower that will have more of a one-on-one -on -one. but for this uh, video here I wanted to show you basically in the studio a snapshot of what this painting um, looked like when it was being created.